Um, at one point in your career, did you start to think about um, uh, coaching? Was it post career? Was it in between uh, while you're still playing? Talk us through yeah. that transition. When I was younger, I never thought I'd get into coaching. It just wasn't for me until I went to rugby union at 27. Mm -hmm. And I went to France, came back to Melbourne. And the last time I went to France, I just did some defense drills with the rugby league team in France, the top team up there, and just really enjoyed it. And I thought I, I had a lot I could give as well. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely had to work on how I, you know, I had things in my head how it should go. But talking to athletes is different than you doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, given good cues and it's taken me a while to uh, improve the way I speak to athletes. Not that I was ever bad, but I mean, there's a way you can speak to athletes and you, you can get across what you need to get across in 30 seconds instead of four or five minutes. Yeah, um, for sure. So um, it's, I'm still learning, but uh, I love to, to learn and try to be the best I can be at coaching. You're going over your career from a playing days. What were some of your most significant challenges that you faced? Uh, I imagine playing at that level, you know, there's things like whether it be you dropped from the first team or uh, injuries. Uh, there's a fair million of challenges that come through with playing, like you mentioned, well over a decade of, of playing at the highest level. Uh, and what did you, how did you learn um, and, and grow from those challenges? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. For 14 years, it's a lot of challenges. And when I came into Penrith, you know, the first year we got the wooden spoon in 2001. So we came last. The next year we came second last or third last. So it was quite hard when you see the fans at you and um, things just aren't going right, even though you put in the work. Mm. Um, and then the next year we actually won the comp. So yeah, That's crazy. What a turnaround. I've had a bit of a career where I've gone really down to up to down and I think it's quite stressful being a player and I mm. think you have to really know your emotions and take control of them and and, and kind of understand the way you you're, why you're feeling this way mm. um, and when you are in a rut the, the best thing is just trying to really think about the basics really think about your strengths what you can bring to the table in that moment where you're like oh you knew there was a, a motive which is working with athletes opposed to just as a personal training business um what, what was the plunge? What was the moment where you really just said, okay, I'm going to start social media. I'm going to start building a website. I'm going to start with like, you know, building a apparel, like you're wearing the Rugby Pro Academy t-shirt now and really yep. building the, the fundamentals of the business model up. Um, I think it's just, it's just a, um, uh, to be honest, I should have started a long time ago. I think it was just a mental shift for me. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I loved on a PT, but I really miss rugby. And then when I spoke to you, you gave me uh, just confidence. I'm like, you know, you're doing something you love. You want to give back to, to the game and these players. I mean, just, I think for me, it was just to enjoy it. Really, mm. I, I just, I, the only thing was flicking up the switch was like, I'm not thinking about, I want to make this huge biz. I just want to, just to en actually enjoy it. And if I can make a mm -hmm. bit of money, that'd be great with it as well. Yep. Um, but for me, it was just a, just a flip saying, let's, I want to do something I really want to enjoy. Talking to um, yourself five months ago, so for the listeners that are that are thinking about it, they haven't, they, you know, maybe they've set up a couple of accounts, but they haven't quite um, taken that plunge, or they haven't had that light bulb switch that you, that you mentioned, where um, you go all in and, and really spend consistent time on a week to week basis. Um, knowing what you now know, what would be some of the most significant challenges that you'd expect to face, you know, in hindsight, uh, and how did you go about tackling those those challenges? Uh -huh. I don't know about for you, but my computer skills are awful. So it just seems to me like everything to do with, well, I suppose it's like business of everything. Everything kind of takes a bit longer than you actually thought and a bit more, yeah. a bit more money. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I'm sure if you put that, that's the thing. If you go hundred percent in it, I'm sure it will pay off. Um, mm -hmm. I think up front, you've got a bit, bit, bit of money, bit, bit of time into it, or mostly it is time and yep. creating these things. But and sometimes it does get you down if you're not getting, you know, views on TikTok or Instagram. You're like, oh, people, you know, are they really watching and that? But I think just just being consistent and think if you'll put something good out there, you know, thing, things will come back and, and, and it'll work. How do you go about thinking of, and creating ideas on, oh, this would be a good, you know, video to create here and, and what am I going to, is it, is it, how much of it's structured? How much of it do you sort of go with the flow and trial and test things? Talk us about, yeah, you've talked about systems before. Yeah. Um, yeah, your process of creating content and, and to help build uh, awareness of your brand. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning, especially about social media. I'm probably not the per best person to have a look, but I'm looking at other accounts and seeing what they do. 
And yep. at the moment, I would say I'm still in the testing mode. Yep. Um, what kind of works better? Sometimes you think, yeah, I've got this video, this very technical video on how to do a move in rugby and you think it's going to go really well and it doesn't. Yeah. It's quite yeah. funny. And you might do an S and C thing where like you might do some tempo runs or like a Bronco test and that just goes through the roof and you're like, but this is, you thinking that's going to go well because that's so important. Um, yeah. It's a weird one. So I'm still learning myself and I would say, especially our TikTok, because that's what's going, working the best. I don't really do a lot of Instagram just because I haven't had the, the engagement as TikTok. 